Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. I'm Richard, this is Lap of the World, and we are now mere days away from heading back down to Florida to the firm for Tuner Fest Florida. Uh, we were invited by the kind folks at RevMatch Track Days to come down and participate in the on-track portion of that event. Um, so we will be out there running in the advanced group in their HPDE session, uh, which will be interspersed then with some drifting, with a car show. Uh, there will be you know, music and food on site, so it's a little bit more of it going on than your typical track day. Uh, at the time that I'm publishing this, I believe registration is still open. If you are looking for some inexpensive seat time, these are cheaper than, it's cheaper than a track night, plus whatever you'd like to donate to the charity they're supporting with the event, uh, or you can buy lesser tickets to get in either to the car show or as a spectator. Uh, but check out that, check all of that out. Rather, there are links down in the description. Now, the last thing we are doing before we set off on this adventure is kind of continuing our front end protection scheme on the NSX with a set of these guys. These are Kite Garage um, radiator condenser screens. Now, I did consider some more DIY options than this. However, these are inexpensive enough and they are ready made. And so there's an easy button that I was willing to push An installation should be straightforward. Although if you don't read kanji, there may be a couple of things that you might miss if you just opened the box and went with Dead Reckoning. Uh, and we'll cover all of that. Uh, so let's get right into our installation. For your 120 US dollars, you receive a pair of side specific FRP frames filled with thin gauge metal screen. They're available in two styles. I opted for the one with more open area for maximum airflow. You also get some instructions in Japanese. Watashi wa Nihango Skoshi Hanasemas. But I am far from fluent and I'm not even gonna to pretend to try and read kanji yet. Um, so <laughs> instead I leaned on a little bit of the technology we have available to us today and I used Google Lens with my phone to read the instructions. The instructions in summary state that there may be a need to trim some around the mounting points, suggest some techniques for installation, and caution that these are only gel coated as delivered, so if not painted could be subject to UV degradation. To install your garage kite condenser screens, you'll need the few following tools and supplies. A 10 millimeter wrench or socket, a JIS or Phillips number two screwdriver, the rotary tool of your choice with an abrasive drum, some fine-ish sandpaper, and your rattle can du jour at a minimum for paint. Test fitting led me to round off the bottom corners and take just a tiny amount of material off around the mounting points, but given the differences from one car to another, your mileage may vary here. I then scuffed and cleaned the screen frames before hitting them with a couple of coats of black paint, essentially a couple hours work to get them looking nearly exactly the same as when they arrived, but now more legitimately ready for installation and of course less likely to be sun damaged. Moving to the car, step one will be to remove these two fasteners and maybe the curved deflectors that would normally attach here. My bumper doesn't currently have these, but you'll know during test fitting if you'll need to remove them on yours. Taking some hints from the instructions, I inserted the outside end first to get the whole screen into the cavity, an act made easier by having rounded the two lower corners. In my case, it was necessary to push some foam out of the way to achieve initial orientation. With not too much fiddling then, I was able to rotate it into position, again pushing on the same piece of foam to allow me to tuck the lower lip under the bumper cover and then position the mounting ears over the respective fastener locations before then reinstalling both fasteners. Overall, on a difficulty scale of one to 10, this was maybe a two or three, and trust me when I say it's less hassle than straightening condenser fins one by one. Now with those screens now installed, hopefully that means I can rest assured that the time that I spent painstakingly straightening all the fins in the <laughs> air conditioning condensers uh, will not be that temporary of a correction uh, and I'll be able to enjoy a little bit cooler air um, as we go into the summer months and the peak of our track and travel season. Now, hopefully you found the video informative, if not entertaining. Um, I understand the appearance of these may be to taste. However, I feel like when painted black. Um, they are uh, sufficiently innocuous so as not to interrupt the otherwise nice lines of the front of your first generation NSX. Um, installation was easy enough in context of the instructions, which kind of 
set the expectation for the level of required fiddling uh, to get them to go in, having been you know been delivered as a uh, not completely rough part, but a uh, an approximately shaped part uh, that will depend on your individual car how easy or not it is to go in. But uh, yeah, so uh, thanks everybody for watching. If I hopefully I can see you, uh, several of you down in Florida if you join us down at Tunerfast again. Links to that event down in the description. But in the meantime, thanks again for watching. I'm Richard. This is Lap of the World, and we'll see you in the next video, if not at the track.